So now let's actually think about probabilities and actually computing a numerical value to the likelihood, measuring the likelihood of some event that we don't know whether it will happen or not, or the likelihood it would happen. What's the basic formula? The basic formula is actually quite reasonable and intuitive when you think about something like, for example, coin um, tossing. So suppose I take a quarter here and I flip a quarter. What's the probability that it's going to be heads? Well, if you think about it, there are two possibilities. It's either going to be heads or tails. And one of them leads to success. One of them would be heads. And so what's the probability of getting heads? It would be one out of two, or a half, since the coin is fair. So in fact, whenever you have an event where all the possible outcomes are equally likely, then in fact, the probability of a particular thing happening is just the number of different ways that thing could happen divided by the total number of all outcomes. So for example, if I flip a coin, and I ask, what's the probability it's heads? Since the probability of heads or tails is the same, there's one success, namely getting the heads. And there's two possibilities, so it's one out of two. So probability is actually defined to be when you have something that's equally likely to occur, many different events equally likely to occur, the probability that a certain thing happens, all the number of ways of success divided by the total number. Let me illustrate this with an, with an example. Suppose I take the coin, and I'm going to flip it three times. Look at it, then flip it again, look at it, and then flip it again and look at it. Well, I could ask questions about the probability of that. For example, what's the probability that they're all going to be heads? I see heads three times, assuming it's a fair coin. Well, the thing we have to do is actually make a list of all the equally likely outcomes. So what are all the equally likely outcomes if I were to flip a coin three times? Well, uh, the first thing I could see would be what? Well, I could see all heads. That could happen. So that all the possibilities would be heads, heads, heads when I flip it three times. Another possibility is I first see heads, then I see heads, and then I see a tail. Another possibility is that I first I see a head, then I see a tail, then I see a head. Another possibility is that um, first I see a uh, head, and then I see a tail, and then I see a tail. Another possibility is first I see a tail, then I see a head, then I see a head. Notice that's different than any of these that we've seen so far. Another one would be, first I see a tail, then I see a head, then I see a tail. Then I could be, first I see a tail, then I see a tail, then I see a head. And then I could look at what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look how many we have. But there's one last one, tail, tail, tail. So in fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. And I could have figured that out by thinking about it as follows. For the first coin, the first time I flip, it's either going to be a heads or tails. There's two possibilities. The next time I flip, there are another two possibilities. So there are a total of two times two, or four possibilities for those two coins. But then I introduce the last time I flip, which is another two possibilities. So that would be two times two times two. That would actually be eight. So I see eight possibilities. These are all of them. And they're all equally likely. So what's the probability they're all heads? Well, only one of them is success, heads, 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 out of all eight. So that would be one eighth, which is not very likely. What about if I asked, what's the probability of seeing exactly two heads? Well, this would not be considered success, because that's three heads. But this would be success. That's two heads, exactly. This is two heads, exactly. So these are success. This is not success. This is success. This is not success, not success, not success. So there's only three, only three ways out of the eight of actually having exactly two heads showing. So that would be three out of the eight. So the probability would be three eighths, which is a little bit higher than one eighth, in fact, three times higher. OK, what's the probability of seeing at least one tail? <clears throat> that means that I have to see at least one tail, but I could see more than one tail. Well, this is not success. I see no tails. Here I see at least one tail. 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 And here I certainly see at least one tail. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be seven out of eight possibilities. That's a very high probability. So in fact, one thing you see is that the, the bigger the number, the higher the likelihood is. And in fact, the biggest a probability could be is 1. And the smallest a probability could be would be 0. And in fact, this is very, very likely. So if I were to flip three coins, three, uh, if I were to flip three times in a row, 1, 2, 3, I would expect it very likely that I would see at least one tail somewhere. That would be a very, very likely thing. Whereas the probability of seeing all three heads would be very, very small. Now in fact, you can do similar experiments with, for example, dice. So you take dice. This was taken from one of the um, crew's uh, cars that was in the front window in the little mirror there. If you roll dice, you could ask for the probability of various things. And in fact, if you play dice games, uh, like in casinos, 
uh, 7 and 11 are important numbers, and, and so on and so forth. So how can you compute, for example, what's the probability of, of rolling two dice and seeing a sum of, let's say, 7? Seeing a sum of 7. Well, you've got to think of all the equally likely ways of, of having dice rolls. Now, one way of thinking about this, by the way, is to maybe think about the dice as being actually separate. So maybe what I should do is put a little, a little um, something in between. Let me put a Teletubby in between them just to separate them. Hi, I'm a Teletubby. OK, fine. By the way, watch this. This is a special Teletubby because this one can go all the way around. Neat. OK, now, so notice that this actually produces 7. Now, this also produces 7. Let me find it. Look at that. That's 4 and 3. But I could also have 3 and 4. But notice that those are actually different events. Because this is the die in my left hand. This is the die in my right hand. Landing this way is not the same as landing this way. Because here I see the 3 in my left and the 4 in my right. Here I see the 4 in my left and the 3 in my right. These are physically different events, even though they might look the same. In fact, really, we have to distinguish these two, these two dice. So in fact, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's six possible outcomes for this one, six possible outcomes for this one. So there's actually a total of six times six, 36 equally likely possible outcomes. So let's actually make a list of what those outcomes would look like. We can do that by making a little chart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the first uh, die up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then over here, I'm going to list the second die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I can make a little chart as to all the possible outcomes that we'd see. Whoops. <laughs> so let's just put them in. So now I'm going to add up the two values. So 1 and 1 would make 2. 1 and 2 would make 3. This would be 4, 5, 6, 7. 2 and 1 would be 3. If I rolled 2 and 2, I'd see 4. If I rolled 2 and 3, I'd see 5, 6, 7, 8. If I sold a, rolled a 3 and a 1, I'd see a 4. 3 and 2, I'd see a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I rolled a 4 and a 1, I'd see a 5. 4 and a 2, I'd see a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 5 and 1 would be a 6. 5 and 2 would be a total of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 6 and 1, I'd see a uh, 7. Uh, 6 and 2, I'd see an 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And now you can see there really are 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 36 equally likely outcomes. So when I'm thinking about these dice and I get 7, how many ways are there to get 7? Well, actually, I can get 7 here. 1 and a 6, 2 and a 5, 3 and a 4, 4 and a 3, which is different, 5 and a 2, and 6 and a 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's six ways out of 36 total to actually see that. So I see the probability would be 6 over 36, which can be reduced to 1 sixth. So the probability of actually um, rolling and seeing a 7 would be 1 sixth, 1 out of 6. So on average, if you did this thing six times, you'd expect that 1 out of every six of them, you'd see a 7. So it's actually not that, not that bad. What about if you want to see a sum of 11? What's the probability of seeing an 11? Well, there are only two ways of getting 11 out of 36. So the probability of an 11, which would look like this, would be two successes out of 36. And so that would be 1 over 18. So 1 18th, which is actually uh, three times less likely than this. So in fact, I would expect to see a 7 much more than an 11 if you keep rolling. Anyway, this gives you a sense of how to compute probabilities. You make sure that you look at all the total number of equally likely outcomes, and then count out of those the total number of successes, in this case rolling uh, an 11. There's two successes, 5 and a 6, or a 6 and a 5. Those are different. And then divide that by the total number of all possible ways. That gives you the probability that that event occurs. And we will take a look at some more probability questions with cards coming up next.